guys, how's it going? Chess back again with episode number 6 of the Tottenham Career Mode. And as you can see, we are playing in Europe in the first game of this episode. We're at home against Genk, the Belgian side, obviously where um, where Kevin De Bruyne came from and uh, subsequently spent a year on loan at after uh, signing for Chelsea before spending a year on loan at Werder Bremen last year. And then, of course, now plays for Chelsea. But we get a good chance there. The the, uh, the first shot, initially, I thought it had come off his chest in real time, but as you can see from the replay, it clearly hits his hand you just can't challenge like that in the box with your arms out wide. It is definitely a penalty. Gilvy Sigurdsson is the best set piece taker in this team that we're playing in this one. And uh, he was the one that was going to take the penalty. Pop it into that top left-hand corner to give us an early 1-0 lead. And that's how we went in at half-time after that penalty in the 32nd minute. So uh, we were doing well, but not the best. But we needed to uh, to score a couple more to make sure that we had some uh, some sort of fallback in case things went wrong. But Jermaine Defoe there wins the header against a guy that's three times as big as him. So uh, <laughs> headers really do need patching, don't they? Um, Jermaine Defoe there winning the uh, the header to put us 2 0 up in the 70th minute, and we're actually going to pick up possession here. Is there in the midfield trying to catch us with a counter attack? We actually pick the ball up and are able to break ourselves. We have a man over that is Andres Townsend. He's going to cut inside. It's just going to uh, t settle himself really, and then tidily slot it away into that bottom corner with his left foot to give us a 3 0 lead. Those two goals came back to back. As you can see, doing Daniel Sturridge celebration. Not really too sure how I did it, and also why Paulinho's arm is going up and down through uh, through Townsend's head and body, but. Uh, uh, we'll we'll leave that uh, we'll leave that little glitch out. So that was quite strange. But we head into another cup game in the second game of the episode, and it is back to the Capital One Cup. So Dardo starting up top, going to be looking to him to make the difference for us as we uh, we try and not lead out of the cup. Gilfi Sigurdsson with a, a stereotypical uh, shot from distance from him, unfortunately does make a draw a good save out of Paddy Kenny and he was quite annoyed at, for some reason I'm not really too sure why but Soldado here is going to have another good shot and again Paddy Kenny is going to be on hand to make a decent save and unfortunately the uh, the follow up gets uh, deflected off our guy and it goes out for a goal kick but they're going to be lax in possession here we pick the ball up Soldado has just got so much time just has to pick his spot does so top right hand corner 19 minutes in and it is 2-0 to us inside the opening 20 minutes but uh, they were actually going to get themselves back in the game just before half time the uh, the ball comes in the first had to come back off the post and then nobody reacts i tried to like go towards the ball with the man that i was in control of and he ran away from it not really too sure why to be completely honest and uh, ross mccormack was on hand to, uh, to pop the ball into the back of the net to give them or bring them back on level terms and then uh, Kyle Norton comes up with an absolutely lovely finish after playing the ball, starting the move from right back, keeps his run going whilst the ball's in the midfield, pops up on the edge of the box, slots the ball underneath Paddy Kenny and that puts us 2-1 up as we head in at half time so again, same with the game match we wanted to make sure that we had enough chances and enough goals to uh, to allow for any mistakes that might come later on Soldado had a good chance there, it was well saved but uh, for some reason the referee gave a free kick even though you would have thought the advantage the advantage was having the shot in the first place but uh, nonetheless we're going to have a free kick we've got Gilfie Sigurdsson in the side and everybody knows how good his free kicks are so we're going to try and line it up from 19 yards out it's going to be hard to get it up and down over the wall keeper makes a good save and uh, Gilfie's actually going to have another couple of chances before this uh, before this move is out Andros Townsend is on the right hand side he's going to pull it back Sigurdsson has a great shot and he still can't find the back of the net he's trying so hard to pick himself up a goal in this one and he was playing out of his skin he really was making another fantastic run from midfield there but again this time just goes wide of the far post can't pick himself up a goal but it wasn't to matter we are going to progress through to the next round of the capital one cup with a 2-1 victory away at Leeds which is fantastic but the focus is solely on this game for this episode it's Chelsea at home it's absolutely massive for the Spurs players and the Spurs fans it's arguably as big a game as Spurs Arsenal is these days and as you can see we're eighth in the league but we've still got a couple of games in hand on some of the teams around us because of Capital One Cup games because of uh, our uh, commitments in Europe we haven't been playing as many games as the rest of us around them or the rest of them around us rather and uh, Perlinio is going to play the Winter Sodara here. Opening eight minutes, Mark Schwarzer, they started in goal for this one. Not particularly too sure why. He comes racing out, Soldado slots it underneath him, finds that near post, and it just goes inside the post to, uh, to put us 1-0 up. But Chelsea were very, very good at holding on to possession in this one, and they probably should have done better though with Sami Eto'o. If he'd have just waited and let it drop down for a volley rather than heading it straight at the defender, we could have been in trouble. And uh, I was honestly, re even though the highlights may show that we're uh, we're doing quite well in this game, I was struggling to keep hold of the ball against uh, against Chelsea. They were so so good. As Christian Eriksen races away here, and another shot 
that goes just wide of the post. And we, we're having decent chances, but uh, Chelsea were keeping a lot of the ball. They weren't having any chances, though, crucially. They had a lot of possession, but they weren't doing anything with it, which is uh, the main flaw with uh, that, that style of build-up play. But uh, Christian Eriksen has compared a lovely ball to Soldado here. Again, beats the goalkeeper to it to slot it underneath him inside the near post for a second time in the game. 63 minutes in, and we do go 2-0 up. So uh, they made a change, and it's not the change you would have thought. They brought on Michael Essien for uh, for John Obi Mikel, so I made a reaction change. Brought on Lewis Holtby for Sandra. More attacking change, and uh, we were actually going to have another chance just a couple of minutes later. Soldado is going to find Eriksen. Probably could have had a shot. Tried to play in Aaron Lennon, but... Uh, for some reason, I went for a tiki dink when I probably could have just put it underneath Mark Schwartz again. But nonetheless, it wasn't to cost us the result. We are going to win 2-0. And uh, actually, th that was the final whistle going there. And it took me to this screen. Apparently, Lewis Holby picked up, like, dislocated his shoulder as the final whistle went. Not really too sure how someone does that. Maybe he fell over in the tunnel or something. But nonetheless, we do finally get to uh, to the confirmation of the result screen. And uh, we do pick up a 2-0 win at home against Chelsea. And that is huge. That is absolutely massive. That's a fantastic win for us. And I was absolutely delighted because, of course... I support Chelsea, so uh, it was bittersweet in a way. But uh, nonetheless, we're going to move further up the table, pushing towards the top of the league, looking for that title that we, I genuinely think we can challenge for this season. But that is going to bring this particular episode to a close. So thank you very much for watching, guys. If you did miss the previous episode, there will be a link on screen over the little play button on the uh, on the end slate. If you aren't subscribed already, there will be a link in the description and on screen over the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel. And, uh, of course, please do feel free to leave your video a like if you did enjoy it. But that is going to be all from me. So thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you next time.